Well, young man, I'd like to get a base reading here. Could you say something? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Just say anything, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, <coughs> I killed a bunch of people once. <coughs> Robo Fortune is one of the most interesting characters from a base stats perspective, because rather than having a specific structure, she instead takes from other characters. This ends up making for a considerable difference between variants in terms of attack and health. Outside of that, her gameplay switches between a projectile heavy approach focused on keeping distances or a close combat one, with useful tools like recovery, meter control, buff control and stun for good measure. But best of all must be her tier 3 blockbuster, Catastrophe Cannon Omega. Not only does it have buff removal as part of its effect, but it introduced the property of permanently killing a character if it finishes them off. Therefore, they cannot be revived with signature abilities or Valentine's Forbidden Procedure. This also works with instant revival abilities, such as Blood Twisted and Last Hope, where they don't instantly recover health and die. The one downside is that it's a tier 3, so meter gain or blockbuster support comes advised. The head drone deployment ability is arguably easier to use than Misfortune's headless mode, but it's also more situational, primarily due to more basic combo potential for comparison and less variance needing its usage. On the Marquis side, they can be easily split into offense and defense. DDoS inflicts power surge while nearby the opponent, which for a quick comparison makes any Robo Fortune a mini Assassin's Creed. Ping check is the opposite, where you need to stay away to gain enraged stacks. It can be pulled off with frequent use of beam attacks, so the distance keeping is not difficult. Prototype can make constant use of her blockbusters by using them again and again, as each one used grants 25% meter for all blockbusters. This can allow for repeated tier 3 usage as long as you keep spamming them, although her base bronze stats will hamper her performance. Naturally, the pink chuck marquee is advised, but because beam and energy attacks inflict power surge, rendering DDoS redundant. Not too bad. M3OW is a great introduction to keeping distance, as she both gains invincibility and deals double damage while far far away from the opponent. Thanks to the invincibility access, she's capable of having rift niches, although it lasts for a brief amount of time, and it's a good stat build to make the most of her. Also, it goes without saying, the pink check is the marquee to pick, so you further increase her firepower. I will not be quiet, Chewbacca, why doesn't anyone listen to me? Nyanotech has a lot of potential, as she can easily gain barrier while launching a headbone, and while benefiting from it, any debuff gets instantly converted to enrage. This would make it so stuff such as Blockbuster only works on Nyanotech's favor and not against her. But she cannot convert Hex, so watch out. Additionally, she's fairly situational, outclassed, and her base stats drag her down, so it can only be recommended for those willing to experiment with her. Wow. Blue Bomber can work as a passable Frost Armor counter, as Beam and Energy attacks can inflict a 15 second armor break. It favors a lot the use of Beam moves as much as possible, but as usual high stat investment is recommended, especially in terms of minigame, so you can use the tier 3 in order to gain 5 stacks of barrier out of it, granting extra durability. She can get results, but in general she's outclassed and may need much more careful stat building to beat Frost nodes. What am I fighting for? This is a particularly interesting variant, since Perminator can potentially scale her attack infinitely as long as she can land critical hits. But the thing about this ability is that it won't take invested attack from moves into count, so it ends up as a dead stat for the most part. Also, you want as many multi-hit attacks on her to increase as much as possible the permanent attack increase. Now, despite her access to precision and death mark from blocked hits, she underperforms on rifts due to the damage scaling taking a while to be noticeable, and the high need for multi-hits. As such, she's usually preferred for prize fights, where she can be good for the most part. We take all day. Ah yes, the explosive hot mess that is Blue Squid. What makes her so annoying to fight is her constant armor gain every 5 seconds, which naturally benefits greatly of Frost Armor, and her explosion when she dies. It's important to keep in mind that if the explosion kills you, it counts as a loss on your end, unlike Immoral Fiber, where you still win even if the character died. But again, unlike Immoral Fiber, it's an actual attack and not just direct damage, so keeping distances is the way to go. What's more is that the explosion prevents blockbuster finishers, an excellent selling point on rifts. The easy solution to this, outside of just hexing her, is to time a blockbuster during the explosion, that way the bonus is validated. 
there's also currently the strategy of cursing her and killing her in midair, which for some reason cancels the explosion, but it's a bug so don't get too attached to this strategy. As a whole, blue screen has a lot going for, great stats in typing, excellent ability, and very accessible for being a prize fight reward. It's only natural to see her in a lot of bases. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom! Terrorbite would be completely dog shit if it weren't for the somewhat saving grace of inverse polarity. Out of all variants to date, she remains the only one capable of inflicting this manually, without the need of relying on external modifiers or luck. And indeed, inverse polarity is a very strong diva that counters anything that heals. But is it enough to issue an investment into Terrorbite? The answer is a clear no, because for most cases, Curse and Heal Block are straight up hitting as hard as possible, do a better and faster job than Inverse Polarity. And her stats are average, but I probably recommend her as a support and not so much a standalone sweeper. Also, the power search and slow is mad. Nice to meet you, expect on! Persona Assistant is a pretty good support, granting barrier and blessing to her teammates, and gaining 5 enrage and precision stacks all every 30 seconds. She does fill the support role well, but unlike Valentine, Robo has no access to revival tools or final stand, reducing her reliability a bit. Plus, the barrier and blessing are for the most part glorified extra help, and they are very vulnerable to curse. On the offense side of things though, while she has enrage, dash attacks are unblockable. The downside is that the abilities and rages only last 5 seconds. However, thanks to Pink Check, this problem is easily patched. And in terms of precision, I see it more as an extra and not so much something to make full use of. But overall, she can certainly give good results both as an attacker and support. Mentira! Sucias me! Headhunter is powerful, as she has easy access to precision by blocking for half a second, and up to 3 stacks, beam and energy attacks become unblockable. It goes without saying that unblockable precision is as good as it sounds, meaning you could easily take care of a plot twisted or immoral fiber that happens to be way too block happy and dispose of them without activating their abilities. But the big elephant in the room is that her ability is currently bugged as unblockable precision hits will be counted as regular criticals, in turn making it nearly useless. That's not to say one cannot find success still with Headhunter, but don't expect her to finish off difficult defenders while blocking and escape free of punishment. If she is to be bad, she'll definitely rise up the ranks in terms of utility, but as of now, she remains a fairly strong variant only. Wah, Lord, wah! Overclock is currently the only neutral to not have an ability tied to element related gameplay. Every 3 seconds of not being attacked, she gains barrier and precision, and at 3 stacks, precision becomes unblockable and barrier deals 50% reflect damage. Granted, she has the same problem as Headhunter with the unblockable precision, but makes up for it thanks to the added barrier for coverage and defensive potential. If left unchecked, she may reach 3 stacks of each, becoming a much more complex fight, so buff control is heavily advised. As an attacker, she can also bring up decent results, with the barrier conserving health and precision while slow, still being put to good use. As a whole, she's a pretty complete package, and also the unique case of the only natural diamond being neutral, but outside of flex that barely matters. Nerd. When first revealed, most people, myself included, thought of Xbox as a lesser version than Overclock due to also gaining barrier and precision, but without unblockable or reflect properties. Thank god we got away from that mindset, as Xwap not only is capable of standing out of her own, but is meta-centric. She also regenerates health while far away and inflicts death mark, increasing massively the damage output of her beams, even more so when taking pink check into account. All these great options in constant healing, barrier and very high damage precision make her capable of taking on several common threats. Frost Armor and Immoral Fibers being the main targets, but her main weakness has to be Curse due to being very buff reliant, so immunity support is advised. In conclusion, Export is excellent and very desirable, and our major mistake was making the unnecessary, albeit understandable, comparison with Overclocked. I had a dream about kissing Master Halo from Halo. Bueno, gané yo. ¿Qué quieres? quieres ¿Te has algunas palabras? Sí. A ver, ¿qué quieres decir? Me cago en Dios. Bueno, vale, bien.